Welcome to the Florida Everglades. I am currently driving along a canal system filled with fresh water and peacock bass. Peacock bass are actually native to the Amazon. They were brought here because there are a ton of invasives in these waters. They brought in the peacock bass to try and eat all the invasives. They're known as the freshwater bullies because they will eat just about anything and they're super aggressive. They're also gorgeous. They're not found in very many places and a lot of times you'd actually find them in canal systems throughout Florida in backyards. But I wanted to come to the Everglades, kind of do my own traipsing around in these uh, freshwater canal systems and see how difficult it would be to find them. There's also some largemouth in here and like I said, a lot of the invasives. So hopefully we'll get a look at some of them too. So with these minnows, we're just using a basic circle hook. We're gonna go right under their plate right here and then right out his nose. So there's like the least amount of damage done to them possible. And then they'll still be frantically swimming when they're down there. I'm just gonna try and cast it up against these pylons here. See if there's fish hanging out on the structure. And then you just leave your bail open, let the minnow swim around. And then if a peacock bass hits, they're supposed to be super aggressive. So I assume it's just gonna peel out line, give them a little bit of time and uh, set it home and see if we can get one. See how the line kind of has like a bend in it, lines out. We use the yellow braided line because you can really see it and it kind of acts as your strike indicator. And when you cast, when a fish takes it, the line will get peeled out and then you'll know. And you're supposed to give them like three seconds to swim away with it because they'll hit it at first just to kill it. And then they want to swallow it head first, kind of like a shark. And then you wait, set the hook, and then I didn't give it long enough, and that's why I missed the first two. There's a fish, right? Click the bail. One, two. This one doesn't feel like a giant, but three casts in and I have a fish on, that's a good sign. It reminds me of a yellow perch back home. Incredibly beautiful. One of the few fish down in 40 you can actually still lip. Awesome. This is cool. This one feels a little bigger. I'm four casts in and I have had four fish that I could have caught. It takes a little bit of skill, so I missed the first two, but I'm kind of getting the hang of it now. You actually let them run with the bait for a little while and then get them. This guy's, I think, slightly bigger. A little different color pattern. He doesn't have as much stripes. He looks more like a largemouth, but he's still got that peacock right there. They're aggressive and they're known to be aggressive. Seeing these younger ones in here makes me feel like two of the reproductions going well. So pretty cool. Clicks TV. TV. We're everywhere. everywhere. You, are. you are. The Greenway Outdoors is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Built to serve. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Bass Pro Shop and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Tracker Boats. Fish the finest. And by these other fine sponsors. Trust isn't built in a day. It's built over time. The early hours and the late nights. It's built by doing the work and pushing the limits every day. Because the promises we make are the promises we were built to keep.
that was money. That's what I've been trying to get to is right next to that. There it goes. This one feels a little better, even yet. Every cast, five for five, just finding structure. This one's got colors like you wouldn't believe. Now that is a pretty fish. They're so, even like this, they kind of have like the power. You know, it's like saltwater fish always seem to have more power, but these guys, you can see why they could survive in even the Amazon with all the fish that are there that'd knock you out. They're just aggressive. Five for five, uh, as far as takes go. Only three fish, but <laughs> it's kind of funny too, is like a lot of freshwater fish, you gotta kind of nurse back to life after catching them. This one, they're liable to just take your finger off and go with them, you know? This is insane. I'm gonna try and just lurk up here a little bit farther to go to the next pylon and uh, maybe get a little bit more comfortable and get my other seat out. Because apparently there's, if there's seven fish at each one. There we go. That's a bigger one. Oh boy. Oh, he got the leads too. This is a much better fight. The way it ran, I could tell it peeled, peeled line. They're slimier than other fish, it feels like. They pull harder. They're way more aggressive. They're like not done with you once they get out of the water like a lot of the other ones. It's like moments like this, I feel like I have to remember to be like super grateful for what I'm doing and where I am. Like I'm in the Everglades right now catching peacock bass. This is like a bucket list trip for me. And it reminds me of like going back fishing with my dad. There was this little lake, it was called Manistee Lake. We would go up there every summer for like a week. And I remember this one time there was a storm coming in and uh, we were just trying to fish before the storm came in and I hooked into what I thought was the biggest fish ever. It was a worm and bobber, you know, like standard kid stuff. And I remember I had both feet pressed against the side of the boat and I'm like trying to haul this thing in and I thought it was the world record largemouth at the time. My dad went to grab it and before he could grab it, it snapped the line because I was lifting it out wrong. You know, you're a kid, you don't know and your dad's just yelling orders at you and you're trying to follow him best you can and you're excited. But it gets off, goes in the water, and I like did not let him live that down. I, I it somehow in my head conjured up that that was his fault and it wasn't my Snoopy rod or the fact that I didn't know what I was doing. But I like think back to that fish and it's like, the one that got away is the one I like, I think about that fish as like my first big fish ever. But then I was talking to him the other day about it uh, when I was headed down here and he's like, that was maybe 12 inches. <laughs> he's like 13, 14, you know, something like that. But 
to go from all the way of that, like that excitement, that story, to come all the way to the Florida Everglades and get opportunities like this, just like you think of those stories while you're out here sitting here, just feel appreciative for the fact that I even get to do this. Lake Okeechobee flows into the Everglades where all the natural grasses are. Cute little guy. And what would happen is it would act as a giant filter and clean all the water as it went through. But now, because they put a bunch of sugar cane fields, that natural grass isn't there as much to filter the water like it used to. And that's why we're seeing a lot of issues with red tide and things of that nature too, um, and a negative effect of it. But there's a lot of activists in the area. Our buddy Drew from Drew's Guide Service actually helps. He's a big proponent for it as well, is getting things back to the more natural way to protect the ecosystem and keep it the way it's meant to be. The organization that does a lot of work for it is called Captains for Clean Water. If you look them up, pretty cool. A lot of the local guides in the area got together to try and clean up the system again. Today I'm going to teach you how to troll using the Fish Pro Trophy in the Everglades for peacock bass. Now a lot of people don't think, when they think sea dew, they might not think trolling for fish, but the setup on this makes it easier than a boat in some ways. First let's break down the cruise control itself. The Sea Dew Fish Pro Trophy is equipped with intelligent throttle control, which allows the PWC to operate in neutral and cruise control settings, which do include eco, sport, touring, and slow modes. To engage the slow mode, you click the button on the left handlebar that looks like an odometer. Then click up and down arrows on the right handlebar to set your speed. The blinking number on your display represents the fastest speed you can go while this setting is in place. For peacock bass, I'm probably going to be starting around the two and a half mile per hour mark. All right, for baiting these, make it simple. Circle hook here. Go up underneath the chin on these little minnows, and then that'll kind of appear like they're swimming freely in the water when they're being trolled behind the boat. For this, I like to use a little bit bigger minnow. So I'm gonna put a bigger one on this one. Just got a little bit smaller one on the other one. Just kind of keep, you know, see what they're hitting on. But from the casting, man, it sure felt like those bigger ones is what they wanted. I'll do the schnoz, it's perfect. Okay, one thing I do like about these is they're pretty quiet, so that does help. All right, let's get set up and start our drift. So I'm, I'm letting, at first I was going to think about 25 to 30 foot of line behind me, but I don't want the bait to come to the surface either, so I'm actually letting even more out. And what you'll notice is like the lines kind of work to the central behind you, so you want to let out a good amount so that the line isn't like right in your wake. And I'm like curving in along the pylons to try and run the line through the structure just kind of manipulating the line to get it to do what I want, trying to dodge lily pads and that sort of thing too. Now, a lot of times you'll see like a pop, 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 and there might be little ones pecking at it, but I've also had like, when it's a big one, it'll just bend over, so I know when it's, when it's an actual fish. And there's circle hook, so between the circle hook and the fact that you're trolling, they set the hook pretty much for you. I'm kind of swooping in and out of these, so that the line is gonna drag right across the front of that nice and slow. It's live bait, so the key is a slow presentation. This slows down the presentation and keeps it in that hot zone right in front of the pillars for longer. Just wanna make sure you do it just enough not to get hung up though at the same time. There we go. That's, oh nice. And that is how you catch peacock bass while trolling and the Everglades. This guy's little, but I plan on getting a whole lot more today. Pretty cool.